Hey, you, yes, you, stop what you're doing. Go down to the app store and install Pokemon TCG Pocket. Once the game is installing and you're making your account and all that yada yada, let me tell you the 5 reasons that would convince you to play the game and by the end you'll already have it installed. Sounds like a good deal? Yeah. Let's go. First, a bit of introduction, because after this opening you might have just been left staring at the screen. My apologies. On the 30th of October this year, Pokemon released a new TCG project on the app store called Pokemon TCG Pocket, which leads us to our first reason. It is extremely easy to get into this game as a new player. I love how they approach this. The Pokemon company probably saw that Pokemon TCG Live was doing poorly, which I understand why. It's been out for about a year and a half and there are still so many basic features that are missing from TCGO. TCGO was my childhood. Its appeal and everything felt wiped away with TCG Online, which just looks very modern and plain and sad. Like Pokemon just grew up overnight. There's no personality to it. Gosh, I miss those old designs. TCG Live was a mess, with so many cards, hard to understand, and too many mechanics. It felt like they took away what mattered. Simplicity. A game can be hard and tactical, but it can be simple in the same way. Look at Rocket League, for example. Pumping cards play football. But after years, players have discovered they can do this. For better or for worse is another topic. So, they put out this game with a single set upon release. Genetic Apex. A pack that contains 226 cards plus 60 secret rares from different sets. It's all a mashup. What a cool way to introduce new players to this game without alienating them from the get-go. It also removed the battle pass that TCG Life had. We're healing as a society because of that decision. You might be asking, how do you open those packs? Which leads us perfectly to our next reason. The packs are free. You can pay for them if you want more, obviously. That's like every game, it's logical. But you get two packs for free each day. If you consider that two free packs per day aren't enough for greedy ass, then you can subscribe to a premium service that gives you one extra pack per day and allows you to collect some exclusive items in the shop. Look at that cool me to play mat. They even go the extra mile and allow you to get a two week free trial with no cost afterwards. If you cancel it before they charge you at the end of the time. Which reminds me, I have to cancel it otherwise I'll get charged tomorrow for 10 bucks and my cheap and broke Eastern European ass would not like that as a first thing in the morning kind of deal. If you want to open more but don't want to use your hard earned cash, then you can use these things called pack hourglasses. These Pikachu-ified hourglasses that can help you get that timer down. One hourglass per hour. They even have daily tasks, which are just very simple and plain. You'll just complete them by playing the game without having to do anything specific out of your way. Just log in, open a pack or two, maybe a wonder pick. And you're done. For it, you receive 4 pack hourglasses, which is not bad in my opinion, since there is no real difficulty to it. Another cool thing is that in the beginning, to get people more into the game, they give those out like candy on Halloween. If you complete your advanced missions, you get 120 I think, so you'll open 10 packs. You also get experience from doing various things, experience that helps you level up, and with each level you get enough hourglasses for a pack and the wonder pick token. That's very nice if you ask me. But what about the packs? When you open one, you get to this cool circle with spinning packs, and I hate to break it to you, but by the time you get to that screen, your rewards are already chosen for you. Of course you can spin around and rotate them, but I always believed in transparency, and if I had to get rock pulled from under me, then so do you. You get 5 cards per pack, your common, rares, all of that, but the interesting and exciting part is that there are god packs. There is a 0.05% chance to get a pack that's full of super rares. It literally looks like a fake bait YouTube video, same like that guy who milked his fake GTA 6 copy like a decade ago. Do I remember that? Crazy. Besides the pack gambling, we also have some other type of gambling. Teach while they're young. I love to see that. There are wonder picks. I've already used that term twice in the video and I might have like two clueless like what are those. Well, you trade wonder hourglasses in the same way you do for packs, but this type of hourglass gives you wonder pick tokens. You use them to open these wonder picks where you can pack a single card from a pack of a random player or one of your friends. It's all at random, but when you pull something good, you feel on top of the world, like my clip over here. I wanted to pack Mewtwo EX since I started playing like 2 weeks ago, and you cannot imagine the fucking medieval dragon noise I let out when I chose correctly. Even so, because I gambled all my hourglasses for that. This leads me to talk about the deck situation. Yes, you can have battles. It's not just a collector app. There are bot battles that give you the shop credits we choose to buy hourglasses to get packs and gamble even more. It's all a cycle. Those get increasingly difficult to the point where you want to scream, even fighting the best deck, in my opinion, the Mewtwo deck. It's annoying as fuck. For me, the opponent, you have a Mewtwo in front, which is 4 energies to deal 150 damage, but discards 2 of them. So technically, you'd have to wait for 2 turns before dealing damage again, balancing it, but well, Psych! Gardevoir's ability is attaching a Psychic energy to your active Pokemon, so you can use that move every round. Crazy. 
Talking about energy, I love how this game improves on that part. There is a thing called the energy zone where you can draw an energy each round for a Pokemon. No more energy card bullshit. This helps the game flow better. The decks are also smaller, from 60 cards to 20. I love the old decks, but as I said before, it was getting too complex with all the new cards, so 20 day guaranteed energy each round feels like such a deserved breath of fresh air for old players like myself, and also helps the new gen get into the game fairly easily. I have friends that have never played TCG before, and are now daily on this game. Pokemon have really knocked out of the park with this one. But, talking about friends, let me present to you my next motive for why you should play this game. Also, how's that download going? Pretty well, I assume. It should not be that large. I like my car. If you've ever wanted to showcase your cards to your friends and people everywhere, then boy oh boy you've now got your chance. With how social media is used by literally everyone nowadays, I was surprised to see that Pokemon TCG Live did not do anything in regards to it, but thankfully we have the social hub over here. You can make binders or display boards and showcase them to your friends and people in the community. There are tons of ways to customize them and you can make cool ones like mine. I'm cool, right? Right guys? If you get likes, then we get that shop currency for our glasses. One per like. I love this step forward, making the game feel more community driven, and they'll even add trading soon as stated here. The feature I miss the most from TCG Online. Man, I used to spend so much time there, weighing different offers. The real businessmen were raised there for real. And those certain binders or boards that you can make can also be displayed in your profile, which again, you can customize. I've got the delightful prompt, I like Pokemon from the Jato region, because I do, in fact, like Pokemon from the Jato region. You can also add emblems, get some for winning trainer battles or for completing the deck. There are three of those, Pikachu, Charizard and Mewtwo. And I'm close to getting the last one I need, which shows that you, for now, do not have to grind that much for the game. I've only said it like two or three weeks ago, which transitions perfectly in the next reason. I am completionist. I love purchasing games on Steam just so I could complete their achievements. I'm a big sucker for that 100% place in my profile. It gives me self-fulfillment, so when I saw that you had achievements for completing the collection in this game, boy oh boy, I knew I had to work towards that. I love how they give you a goal. It's good, it keeps the players interested in playing. It's all logical. The game gives content a purpose, the player stays on. It also capitalizes on the strong feeling of not missing out. We as humans fear being left behind in any department. When you see people playing this game, and I mean a ton of people, it already has tens of millions of downloads, completing the collection for the first pack available, it makes you want to do so as well, to not be left behind. Especially because the people behind it are not lazy. They've already put out a statement how they're working to better the game and that they'll release a new pack by the end of the year. Thanks to Centralix on Twitter, we know of multiple stuff that's about to come. A Bulbasaur Magnemite event, a store update, and a new pack on December 16th. So, what are you waiting for? You still have time to install the game and collect most of the genetic Apex pack before the new one arrives. If you do it now, then you won't have to collect that much later on, you know? Trust me, you'll have a lot of fun. Which leads us to my final reason. The whole experience feels very warm and welcoming. It treats new players very fondly. Not only new players to this game, but to the concept of Pokemon TCG in general. You most likely have heard of them in the past, but just decided not to play it because it was just too much. Too many packs, too many meta builds, it was a mess. So them changing stuff like that to make you feel more included and have fun is a very upstanding way to construct this mobile experience. Flex other cards that you surely have not spent real money on to your friends, fuck around with bots to get store currency, or whoop the ass of randoms with overpowered decks, like the Mewtwo one or Water decks. Mrs. Card is a bit too fucking much, hopefully they'll do something about it, because people can really end the whole game in their first turn if they get lucky with hitting heads. The game has flaws, obviously, it's been out for only a month, but I like the direction it's heading in. If I were to change it, I would let first turn attach energy from the energy zone as well, because it feels like too much of a disadvantage going first instead of second. I like that you now can use supporter cards if you went first. I don't understand, or just cannot simply remember, why it was not a function in the classic, but I sure do love seeing it here. So. What are you waiting for? Your download must be ready by now. Go and play it. Have fun. And don't use a mute build while I curse you and your whole family and leave me a like and subscribe and bye.